Irrespect of the technology that you are going to deal with, like it may be .NET, it may be Java, it may be mainframes, it may be any programming language with UI database combination or only programming language or only backend, or it is Pega or it is Salesforce, anything. The application running process, transactional processing, while it is happening, there might be something, some details that you have to write into the files those files information will be helpful to identify and understand what has happened okay let me tell you one requirement so those files are called as log files okay let me tell you one just example suppose you're trying to purchase a product in amazon okay as part of your purchase process you have made the fees payment uh, i mean like i'm sorry you made the payment at the time of payment is being done okay and what you have seen is your payment has been debited your payment has been debited from your account but some error screen you have got in the ui some pro problem is there uh, for processing your request you did not get any confirmation and all so what would you be doing you talk to the customer care amazon customer care you call them and you tell them that i am i have made the pay, pay, uh, payment for the product and i don't see the regular screen what i used to see i got something like it displayed your customer care number and asked me to call you so i'm calling you and reporting the issue what is happening with my product now what do they do they wanted to it's not that they will be they, they know that in the database they will have everything and they can reorder the this one and all okay so if they reorder the product for you you will get the new product and everything is okay but here the point is what is happening in the application why this issue has been occurred what is the reason that the business wanted to know in future they have to rectify it right so for this reason they will be creating one request that request will be assigned to one technical person and the technical person who receives this type of request from business call center is called as production support team l1 team something like that will be there production support team this technical person emaindanni evaru na avuthu attention avadu ledu kada dananta kade kada inda okay so this technical person has to identify the issue customer care people who what they will be giving so on so customer this is the id he is trying to do something the business transaction there was some issue it seems please try to find out the issue whether it is it may be a critical issue in future and fix it customer support guy he received uh, maybe the operator id who is trying to do this he doesn't have any information in the ui to give you like order id may be there or may not be there order id and all but he has to find out the issue where is the information where is the details about the issue but this person will come to know about the time when the transaction has been made that information also they will note down 99% they will note down here and there that also will not be available okay if customer is not recording the date and time it will not be available okay anyhow see now this support person will log into the application server they will have access developers will not have access production support team will have access to login in the sense they will not directly login access to some specific folder paths okay and here is the folder path this is the folder path and in this path you have log files there will be some information that will be written every time some error is happening it will be written here some issue is happening automatically it will be written here but not everything there is something that you may have to write by yourself if you find anywhere if you think like this type of issue obj open is there user may enter a wrong id as a result it will throw error message obj open wrong id means it will throw error only you have to do step status fail and jump to some other step accordingly you have to handle it while handling you will add additional step that is log messages one more method is there what is that log hyphen messages and you can write down the message whatever you wanted to write so that will give you any time when user enters wrong id and all obviously that will be logged into your 
log files you can run. like that developers will do accept handling in so many other places where they do write the information into log files log files will be accessible to the support team support team will log in control f try to find out the id of the customer with id they will search it should be there somewhere at that place are there any error messages are there any error messages or not like that they will try to search some error message is there based on that they will try to re recreate the issue in development uh, not in development i'm sorry uat uat also issue is happening okay then qa qa is also happening development also happening there is some problem with testing okay or maybe as part of other requirement that got this got disturbed we need to find out the root root cause, root cause of the issue fix the issue and redeploy it to not happen in the future now to troubleshoot the issue the first place that you verify is log files any time if this question will be asked is asked any time if there is an issue reported in the live server what is the first place which you verify where do you verify because you don't have access to the live servers right you will not have you have access only to the log files you verify the log files you try to search with operator id case id and the date and time when it has happened at the appropriate place try to find out the issue you type control f exception error like this you verify this error exception anywhere you see okay that is matching with the date and time that is matching with the operator id try to find out the error message that has been automatically written by pega pega has that feature of writing automatically or maybe the developers might have written it properly at that place read that information try to find out the issue based on the information provided and fix it okay this is what you will be doing everyone clear make sense online resources online everyone clear so this is how you are going to deal with writing uh, i mean like i'll show you the log filing and all in the activity use log messages right you can do it by using data transforms also which i'll do you, tell you but before that you go here there are different types of log files available system where is it operations logs we mainly know about or focus on pega logs pega logs all the information will be written into pega logs like a regular messages and you deal with alert logs also you deal with alert logs open the alert logs here you find alert codes as of now what we have here uh here what is what is the alert code pega 0001 like this you have pega 00023483251 all this based on this code you can easily identify what is the issue okay how do you identify that let me tell you so for each code what is the information and queries also will be available here sql queries that are running and what is the code is code all about you will come to know when you go through pdn help okay so let me open a document for the same level sandal i'll tell you later i why i don't have it it should be there maybe some other document i'll just verify yeah i don't remember this uh, name sandal not much in this document only i remember i have placed it Using data here, I should have anyhow the, all the information what you have there here also in this. I will share this document only. Okay, look at here. Pega 001, I mean triple zero one, triple zero two, triple zero three, four, five, eight, nine, like this. See, um, you can see here you're trying to log into the application, you're not getting the login page. They have to find out what is the issue. They log into the server, go to log file, they will search alert logs. La, suppose they see Pega 0009, 0009, which means that startup is failing some for some reason. 
they have to focus on startup admin team will work on it okay like this and you see here see here you are seeing pega double zero one zero in the log files what does it mean as part of background processing by agents there is some execution error in the activity the failure is because there is some execution error in the activity you need to find out what is it in the activity if you have written some more information after this you try to look at the uh, alert codes and try to read the description of the alert code and try to understand what is the issue and accordingly you go to the pega log files and you search in the pega log files again what is the issue that is happening so alert logs will help you to identify and understand what type of issue is being caused by the alert code you can read it the cheat sheet for alert code i am sharing you okay these alert codes will be written automatically by pega into alert logs and now see after that you go to pega or pega logs where is it you go to pega logs here these pega logs will help you information message alert logs are going to give you details about the queries as well as queries as well as alert codes these log files pega logs will give you information details okay divide by zero exception some other exception root rule not found exception or maybe anything that you write okay the provided id is not found or service is down server is down anything that you write it will be there in this log files so you will be mostly verifying in the uh, alert logs as well as pega logs also no these logs will be the log files will be there in development qa uat everywhere but usually where do you verify in the live only as a developer you want to find some issue you will verify development environment qa qa environment uat uat production production everywhere it will be there and now see while you are going to deal with writing the logs by using activity let me show you technical activity for some reason you are going to uh, let's say ob jopper is failing and you jump to a step called log messages and here you write the log message hard coded or reference of a property or a function anything and log level information info by default you are seeing but remember it is a thumb rule while you are writing your own logs you will always write info first you will not see this provided in pega but we write it info first you are going to write your own logging message into prpc log files forcefully without bothering anything info forced if they ask you in interviews what is the log level that we use while writing the logs generally in general which one info forced like this there are different levels of logs if i give info high level info forced my own info is pega provided high level and you can easily understand this debug if you write the log level as debug debugging your what is the main debugging tool in pega tracer right tracer level what is the information that is getting loaded tracer 10 records are there you click on each record huge data will be there right all that information will be written into the log files this is completely not at all recommended to be used in live you should never use it if you are using it within one minute the log file size will become 10 gb in live servers so it is never recommended to write or use debug log level setting in the live servers at all okay other than this you see there are different log level settings available alert alert codes you are getting because that is by alert log level setting where is the, where is the document which i opened few minutes back okay look at here no log level fatal means indicate severe errors are there okay application may get terminated because of this system will use all this we will not use everything we will use only info forced error alert warning debug like this different levels of settings are there log level settings can be done here why i'm not getting it hold on i'll choose one related to activities related Pega rules activity and here I can choose the log level setting. Usually your tech leads will be choosing this in your production server. 
it is always information level for most of the things debug if you choose here your application will shut down within one hour because of the space of hard disk on live servers will be occupied completely application server allocated space because it will become terabytes within few minutes okay because of huge data that is flowing in the system so you never deal with debug option in the live understand everyone clear so this is how you you can go ahead and choose the log level settings that has been done here so in the activity you can do by logging very simple by using log message i'll tell you one more point which uh, most of the people they don't know instead of writing your suppose you wanted to write some message which pega provides plus additional message you can use one function i am not sure whether it is accessible in uh, home version or not but let me cross verify once get post message this is fair enough if you directly add this function whatever the prpc generates error message right error message uh, py message and all all that information will be written here all that information is going to be written here whenever you are going to deal with here additional to this i want to append some other property values and some message current date time what is the current date time usually pega will write automatically date time there is no need to choose but if you want to choose get current date time stamp get current date stamp current time stamp current date all these functions are available additionally you can add something more additionally you can add any other further information if you want to add here by going through these messages everyone clear makes sense so this is about log level settings that you can do okay everyone clear makes sense online resources and log message function and now the same logging can be done okay this is activity through activity or calling connector there might be some issue and you are doing exception handling. data page if you're calling how do you do the exception handling when you're dealing with data pages okay look at here logging can be done even by using data pages this way In the data page, you might be calling activity, right? See here, uh, exceptions can be exception handling can be done by using data pages. In the data page, you have to call a response data transform, that is PX error handling template. Let me open that and show you. I will brief out about all this. This is an ODB data transform available provided by pega itself in this data transform you have already predefined functions get page messages whatever the error messages that are there on the clipboard page respective page on which it's running you are assigning it to some parameter and similarly previous messages and all you are you are removing and finally you see here param.log message you are assigning you are writing into log file at this step px log message is the function which we use to write some log information into log files this you access by using data transform px log message but in activity log message function it method itself is there you use log message method in activity same as a function it is available in the data transform you put your message here in the braces that can be a parameter or that can be anything and now this particular data transform provided by pega px error handling template is a final rule what does it mean we cannot copy this rule in another version you cannot save as this rule into another rule set with same name means you cannot override this rule if i save as into my application rule set with same name i am overriding you cannot override this rule if you want to override there is no way you have to create the similar one creating means change the name Changing the name means you are creating a new one. So you need to save as into your application rule set with a new name, which means you are creating the same and you delete the steps what you want to delete and add more steps. And this is important. Eighth step log message is equal to PX log message means you are logging into this one. And the last step, if you want to implement, you can implement sending email notification to the customers about this issue. Understand everyone what you're logging, maybe developers also you can send an email like that and this is about log messages that you are going to write by using data transform there is one more data transform here.
whether there are error messages or on the data page or not how do you know data page has been referred somewhere data page is calling a connector rule connector rule has failed for some reason data page should have errors how do you know whether data page has errors or not in the activity step status file you use and you do exception handling okay but in data page very step status you are using data transform very step status so you need to use a function you, you need to call a when rule px data page has errors go here the screenshot is available no problem anywhere they called here no they did not call anywhere suppose just for your for instance when at the very beginning you may be adding when this when this data transform runs initially you will verify when px data page has errors when this is happening if the all these steps will go inside if this is not happening there is no need to execute the steps of adding log message and all as per you when data page has errors how do you know whether data page has errors or not this question if they ask you px data page has errors when rule you need to call if that is true remaining will get executed else it will not get executed this is how except handling in data pages can be done by using this one let me open a data page and show you connector related we have right i mean like connector test we have right for some reason connector test is failing you don't know but you have to log it for any failure i have opened connector test huh? Here you see, see here. In the post processing also you can do in the activity, but I am not bothering about it. I'm just trying to look for something else. Data transform, right? Somewhere I should be getting that option, right? Hold on. We should have to get one option here. Error data transform. Yeah, yeah. Response data transform below, you should get run on data page. Run response data transform on error. This option I'm looking for. Maybe you're getting only for lookup or what? Like this, you should be getting. Run response data transform on error. So this data transform will get executed only when there is error. In this data transform, again, you will verify if PX data page has errors. Yes, then log messages and all you will be doing. Okay. So this is where you will be calling. I will post this video in YouTube channel. No worries. Okay. You watch it once again. That is just for your information. I'll share this document. But while you after you watch it, you save as the data transform px what is that px error handling template while you do save as change the name from px error handling template you have to change it to maybe data page error handling data transform like that and change and you may disable the, enable the step at log message you write something and see once and show you anyhow after some time in tomorrow at the very beginning i may show but you can do it okay by yourself also uh, that is about except handling using data pages can be done by using two ootb response data transforms one is px uh, error handling template another one is px data page has errors both these data transforms are final 
we need to save as with a new name and then access it into our application and here px log message function is the main one which you use in order to log messages into log files make sense everyone clear see these logs will be accessible everywhere like in development qa production everywhere log files will be this one this is what about log level setting you can go through the document and log files alert codes and except handling by using data pages you'll do by response data transform by running it on whenever there is any exception okay so i will be sharing this document in five minutes i'm going to close the meeting now okay thank you hello i have one yes. hello go ahead um, go ahead please um how to place the loggers in the assignment shape i mean will you show that one assignment shape up uh, yes, I mean in the assignments or the, uh, in the utility or what in order to in logging, the logs. you, are, you are asking about logging loggers loggers I mean log level settings log level settings you cannot do okay settings for each of this you will be finding here in the log level settings you have to go here activity assignment like that you type you should be getting but it is you need to learn it actually Okay, even I am not very much sure about completely. All these are coming, but when you read it, you will be able to little bit understand. Okay, reassignment process means this get executed. We have implemented one requirement. Do you remember? Like whenever the SLA is been missing, we are doing a transfer. Mm -hmm. That time, this option log level will be used by Pega. Even though whether you choose it or not, Pega has default logging for everything. Okay specifically you wanted to come here and then choose you choose it but only one option choosing will not help you leave it blank and then you go ahead and choose maybe mostly you will find activities related here every time okay, okay we'll continue tomorrow thank you for joining everyone